Hello my fellow earthlings, I have just finished uh, painting again. This is also going to the same exhibition as my big landscape. And it's this one. And I think it became quite okay. Uh, the lighting became beautiful, it's made from this photo that I took of an ex-girlfriend. Dancer, very nice girl. Uh, and uh, the textures and the colors and uh, everything is quite vivid here, but I think it became. I, I feel, feel I got something here in the textures and everything. I really do think that I did some good works. It was difficult because of the hues in this, it's extremely yellow and green and it got so fucking vivid. And the hand also is actually in motion. She was moving and she was in motion. I see it's very yellow hair, but okay, I just have to play with it. Yeah, that was more like it. Okay, so I had to kind of paint it as it was in motion and yeah and in this video I talk about everything from the wasting of time to how to live life the politics even Donald Trump uh, and uh, all kinds of stuff while I'm painting so I hope you enjoy the video I think you can actually learn something from this and remember there is as usual a patron button down there subscription here uh, another video here and a uh, uh, playlist so remember to put my videos into your playlist and share on social media and become a patron if you like to support my work it would be great uh, just go check it out okay until next time stay cool hello I'm gonna start on a new painting and it is this uh, Victoria dancing with light or something. I don't really know what. Yeah, it's quite nice. It's, uh, was taken. The picture was taken in a late evening, and yeah, she's actually an ex-girlfriend, but nice girl. Good dancer, and I'm gonna paint her on this little canvas. So, yeah, it's gonna be quite complex, also. So, yeah, enjoy. Okay, dokie, dokie. As usual, I'm starting by since I'm not using a uh, I'm not using a tracing or a projector, so it's always on freehand. It's one and a little bit. I'm starting with a head. It's one and one, one and maybe one third or something. So then I go down one, two, three, and basically almost four. And then I look at these here and I try to see and I just say oh dear that's my kind of starting point uh, I might, might adjust it she's almost in the middle but a little bit over there so I just do like this and I mark I think maybe her head comes down Approximately, see it's a very yellow hue in this, yellow, reddish, warm, so it's a little bit different. It starts there, her, here, she has nice red hair. I love, I love red hair. Red hair is really beautiful. It's something I always liked. Uh, then cheek then I go in and I think okay 
like this. So how big is it now? Is it one uh, one third, a little bit less, a little bit lower down. I just say okay. Now it's okay. Then I want four down. So it's one, two, three, and basically four. So you see, I got it. And that is that is the important thing because when I start painting, I always start painting like this. I just put stuff in. Start to see how it's shaped and where the lights hit. Anyway, I just start. molding um, in this one I will go for the light areas first so I'm gonna start to put that in I don't want to go too thick in the beginning because I will probably do some mistakes and it's easier to correct mistakes if you haven't gone into thick in the beginning. And this is a face, and a face is always more difficult than an object or anything else. So be a little bit careful with the sketching that you get that right, that you actually get the placement of the object right. The uh, yeah. Now I can also use the background here because it's it has this greenish hue in the background, especially behind her hair. So I can go in with some quite vivid colors in the background there. And I just see here. I can see okay, is this basically in the middle? It's one. Now it's a little bit to this side. And it just comes leaning down here. You see, I did a mistake there. It should actually be up here. I think. So that's how it starts. sketch much I just go right on to the paint and start molding actually doing uh, I see some people do kind of gazelle like things uh, in the beginning Personally, I don't see the point of starting off with a grey sketch when you can actually go straight into the, the paint at once. So, yeah. And it does become more and more like clay for me. As I go along, start moving things around and fighting the battle, fighting like crazy. Actually, well, since I painted a face, I'm going to get into deep shit trouble in the beginning. I should actually do some sketches of faces all the time just for to make some very small sketches just to keep my skills alive. 
because you can actually, I, I noticed if I don't paint anything that is very complex, it doesn't take that much time to start fumbling and you don't know where to go, you start to do mistakes, you can't concentrate and your brain gets overwhelmed and stuff like that and I mean our brains are neurons like a computer we are training it or giving it a by training we are given a kind of a software to do do the tasks at hand and we when you don't do it you cannot lose it. It's it's like chess in a way. If you don't play chess you lose it. So you have to keep doing it. All the time. Funny thing is this is she's moving her hand when I took the picture, so the hand is kind of out of it's blurry and I'm pretty sure people is going, oh you haven't got the hand right. <laughs> so I have to kinda of have to paint it like it is in motion. Or there's always some people who will use every opportunity to criticize your work. And uh, that's good, I don't mind. I don't know when I have fucked up. Justice. One painting. I know it looks like shit now, and I probably will for a while, but in the end, I usually manage to bring it to a close. So. I have to finish this one quite rapidly actually because it's going to this exhibition. Uh, so just have to keep working on it. She has this very nice look on her face. Funny, sometimes when you see a picture of an ex, you start wondering why, why, why did I break up with her? You know, she's a very nice girl. But sometimes things just doesn't fall into place, and you just have to walk on. It's always sad. And you have to do that. Kind of breaking two hearts in one go. I hate hurting people, so hurting girls. So it's not nice. 
Anyway, <clears throat> she's doing fine. So. Um, okay, I just need to stop filming. Concentrate better. I think you get the point. I do. What you can notice is that if you are a painter, you are more classically skilled that has gone to school, like in Venice or. You can see that I'm, I am not class, classically trained. I just start and then I work with the paint until there is not so many rules. Like I just try to paint what I see. Uh, and I, I usually joke around with me being a bad Xerox machine. <laughs> That copying machine, like uh, Windows 95 or something. I'm trying to update my software so I can be become better. It's a very nice reddish. Color in my face. That look is just gorgeous. I have a film I took of her, an analog, analog film where she just dances when I go. Maybe I should paint a, a series of her in motion, like a cartoon in a way, but in paint. It would be interesting. Not very huge paintings, but yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Did a little mistake on putting her. Let's see if that is like this. Well, it's basically the same. It should have been a little bit more to that way. That is the kind of mistakes you do when you do it freehand. It can give something, and you like, then you have to, when you're sketching, you have to start moving it a little bit. And then I start moving this, and I move this a little bit that way, and, and I go back and forth. And all these touches, all this is actually, in the end, giving the painting more personality, because I have put myself into it by, by every brush strokes is a subjective touch. And um, that is why the best paintings in the world are not just brilliantly technical on a level I can never dream of becoming, but they are also extremely subjective, like the best things of Rembrandt and Vermeer, and you can see the artist in the brushwork and in the struggle and uh, concentration and uh, yeah it's really nice so, mm. so.
Nia. Okay. She's gonna lifting her shoulder up to her cheek. So it's actually up there. You can see that from now. So this is up here. You see how I have to kind of move stuff around. And in the end, it evolves into something. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Now you see how I work to get this, to sketch this face. I'm taking a small uh, print so I can actually get it closer so I can have a direct communication between my my eyes, brain and uh, motif so in a way I'm kind of projecting some strange way projecting it And I'm keeping it very loose. The brush strokes are fluid, like waves, because this is very diffuse. It is not supposed to become hard and rigid. It's going to be open. I'm going to work slowly towards. motif without kind of making it hard and, and painted. I can actually feel how much I love this because it doesn't necessarily look so much like the model right now but I can already now kind of see or project into the future that this will be or become a nice painting. I can feel it because I love working with it. Because I actually only work with the, the colors and the light. And it's already kind of dissolved. So there aren't any details to disturb me too much. I just need to focus on the shadows and light, light and dark, and inch myself for every brush stroke a little bit closer to to the motif. I will I do a lot of mistakes, but then I correct them. For every correction, I get a little closer. I remember as a child, I loved. Uh, playing with Lego and um, build with Lego but what I didn't like was when they started to come out with the Lego that was already you know you had already a uh, um, mall in a way for how it should turn out. So you should build this house or that house. I actually just like to sit around with the building blocks and just try to build houses and from my imagination. And uh, in a way that that's why I felt some kind of And I went back to my childhood. It's also very subtle to work with. Usually I paint very big. And it's quite nice to actually do this kind of work. Because it is so different. And it's very subtle work.
since you can every time you see all the things that I have to adjust even the shoulder is higher and I painted it down here in the beginning it's crazy because that is how the brain works it kind of tricks you to do mistakes all the time if you start to go into the symbol stuff you won't and get it right. For every big painting I paint, I should actually paint one small version of them. Just to have because I have so much material I want to paint and actually I don't have enough time in existence to, to do it but I will um, try to reach over as much as I can the time I have I really enjoyed this, really seriously, and um, it made me happy because sometimes I'm also very distracted and kind of lose sight of the love part of painting. But when I do this, I just feel how it just comes rolling back to me so yeah it's a good feeling I remember her smell she smelled so good it's funny Think about that now. Well, it's a start. It looks like a face now. And it's something to build on. So I'm gonna focus on that to show you how I build for a while. So, see ya. So, I am trying to. I'm gonna film this not in so long segments, I think, uh, but I wanna focus more on detail and uh, and uh, brush strokes I'm um, just trying to place things right uh, as you also see I have to <coughs> I'm using the background and the foreground to find the right Drawing right placement of the object of the girl. It's gonna be a, gonna work with the details also in the background. I get that far. But 
right now I wanna focus more on the on the things that is happening around here. And it's actually a lot. So there's a lot to grasp. But I'm also going to keep this very painted. Uh, and that is going to be quite liberating actually. So. Just kind of grabbing behind her here. Like that. And the other one comes down here. In like this, should not that much there. Also, I should use a mirror to actually look at the motif and then back to the painting so we can actually see if I've done any mistakes. You can actually do that, you just hold up a mirror and you look at the motif if you're using a, if you're using a photograph. That's how you do it. So, yeah. Funny how you can just start this rough and over time you just mold it into shape, into the motif that you're after. I do notice that I'm becoming more and more like a painter's painter, that more and more I'm kind of moving towards some more painted paintings. I used to be, I do like detail, but I also like, I enjoy the textures much more. So, yeah. I guess that is a natural evolution for any painter who is uh, very fond of of the paint in itself and the importance of paint. There's a lot of stuff happening in the background too, which I will do more of. I will work wet in wet and uh, basically try to build when it's not that dry. far out. You just have to see everything. And what I do is just see everything and compare them to one another. Oh, the guy in the store upstairs is starting to run. 
Shit. There's a store upstairs that I would like to buy someday and build into a studio. And, um, gallery. But, first things first. a lot of light behind there, so thick sunlight beaming in, hitting the wall. And that is what is so beautiful in this, it has these extreme, um, it reminds me of some of the Norwegian paintings like, like Harriet Parker and uh, Halfdan Egerius. Norwegian painter who died when he was only 21 in the late 1800s. Uh, it's so sad, but he used to build these thick layers where the sunlight hits and it kind of the light is kind of beaming out of the painting because of that. And, um, that is why the paintings from that era became alive because they were using the colors more as clay. And uh, they loved the paint. And that's the whole thing. That's the beauty of it. <clears throat> Funny, I kind of miss her a little bit when I paint her. She was fun to be with. She was a, was a dancer and I love to dance and she loved to dance. So. It would be worse now though, because I have my fucking arthritis. See, I just play stuff. I saw a documentary of um, Lucent Freud, and he was kind of touching and choosing. Like he did choices. He was looking and then just added the color. And. I think it was quite brilliant, a brilliant way to do it. Just to think you did with a color sort. But every artist has to evolve his own style. And I guess every artist has their own style, even if they can't paint, or every person will automatically have his own style because it's like having a it's like having a, we all have different um, uh, kind of what, steps or <laughs> fingerprints so it's kind of the same thing Okay, I was working so vivid now, but okay. Anyway, you didn't see what I did down there. So. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna start up. I let it dry a couple of days 
actually I uh, when I want it to dry fast I just put it over an oven so the process goes faster uh, I'll start with the lighter areas and work from there It's very bright, this. Uh, I will try to, to focus. I was asked on YouTube if I can do some, some video with more focus on breaststroke and, and close-ups. And that is exactly what I'm going to do in this. I'm going to try to stay closer so you can actually see more what I'm doing. And it's also fascinating to see how um, things evolve. Maybe I should also make some smaller sketches where I maybe focus a lot on a, on a face. And uh, yeah, so you get a more better feeling of. Oh, I build up a face. Uh, it's a lot I can do. Mm. Yes, so it's very bright. So it will. The problem with with uh, prints when I print out is that sometimes in Photoshop and stuff they don't really understand how to repeat the colors. Uh, yeah. But here is a very subtle, there's not much detail, so I can keep it, just keep doing the light, keep it in the, uh, yeah, light, like this. up here it's quite yellow on this side. The widest is here is almost blue and reddish in it and it's very yellow. It's very direct sunlight coming in from the side and hitting the face so it's in very much in the red shifted colors and the yellows. And I don't need to talk all the time. Sometimes I go on my rants and uh, We need to buy new pencils. Okay, it's red. It's 
very red face. bigger pencil. Uh, maybe I should wait with that. It's quite important what tools you use. Uh, these are different, they're actually not the usual uh, Da Vinci, which I usually use. I can actually feel the difference. They're not that dynamic. It's supposed to be good. I, don't know. I like Da Vinci. You see, I work first, I just put on a layer. go in and I start working with different nuances I maybe go in here and start to make all these uh, let it be fluid so the things more flow all the surfaces and lines just flow into one another. I can actually start on this side because it's always best to work this way. If you work here and go there, you know. So actually it's better to work this way. Or if you work with detail. Don't mess up here because you're gonna Get a lot of shit on your fingers and stuff. It'll be messy. Usually, when you stand there for many, many hours and you paint for hours on end, it will become a little bit messy anyway. So, yeah. Uh, that is just how it is. See, now I'm just dragging the colors into one another. A little bit. And um, because there is no real detail here, and uh, I just need to find the right nuances. So just drag it like this. So now you know
I think I do use the colors a little bit different than other painters because there is a combination of the, the kind of Rembrandt style but also I'm quite inspired by uh, the early Impressionist before they became too uh, let me say early monk or early um, early Degas all these before they just let it all go like Delacroix and uh, I actually fell in love with Delacroix very early, his, his color, use of color. But I also love the, the, um, sculpture, scul sculptural, <laughs> uh, dimension to Rembrandt and, um, the classics, so in a way, since I didn't go to any painting school, I went to an art school, but you didn't learn to paint there. I have, in a way, by doing mistakes, evolved something that is distinctly mine, I think. It's not perfect, that's not what I'm saying and it's work in progress and it's a thing I will really intensely work with for the rest of my life but I feel that it's mine it is uh, it's not something that is easily easy to copy and that is what you should do you should just paint and try to increase your skill level Break down your skill walls and uh, just go with the flow and try to understand paint. Yeah. So that is how I'm thinking about it. This motion is such a sexy moment. Sexy evening. Um. It's very fun to work with, actually. Surprisingly so, actually, because even if I, even sometimes I kind of go into this, you know, when authors are getting an author's uh, wall, they can't really get much writing done. Sometimes I have this drop in in my motivation it doesn't I do paint but I also are very distracted I do have a diagnosis of of a light bipolar thing I don't have the big drops that people do but my also had some ADHD thing which I personally call the warrior gene I mean, it's a, it's a blessing in a way. Uh, I don't believe in gods, but the world was a blessing because you have it and you can go, always go the last mile. Uh, but it also comes with a very active brain, and uh, sometimes you just wear yourself out. And, uh, you know. But I always come out of it, I 
if I have a down period, I always come out of it as a better painter. I even had some quite big depression going on for a few years now because of a lot of stuff that happened in my life. A lot of stress, a lot of... too much of everything, basically. And um, despite that I couldn't really have this continuity, uh, I had to struggle to get going, I did become both a deeper person and a better painter. So, I mean, becoming a better painter is not all about technique. It's all also about reaching into the depth of yourself. And um, seeing yourself in a more objective way, way. Because when you do that, you actually start to see the deeper layers of aesthetics. And when you do that, you start to value different things more, like the textures and the brush strokes and the coincidences that appears while you're painting. Yeah, yeah. So, something bad can often be something really good. So, yeah. And with that, I will paint without you watching. And uh, I will talk to you. Yay. I just have to get more of the whole thing. I've been working with her for a while. And um, it's not so bad. I need to get the whole room in so I can I get some get a better overlook to what needs to be done. It's very important. Too many forgetting to actually wash them properly. It's a waste. I'm wasting pencils. I shouldn't do that. You see now. Darkness. I have been working so uh, to kind of get the to focus the light now. I need to do the whole surface surface so that I um, can see that everything is placed where it's supposed to be and stuff like that. Important. Mm -hmm. More color. store today and buy some more color, especially white. Kind of out of white soon. I have to work like crazy on these paintings because I want to be sent to an exhibition. It's not so into the future and I do get a lot done when I first but I don't want to come into the situation where I don't feel that you know, I'm upholding some kind of 
want to see. And um, because that's important to me. Now this painting is not typical of what I usually do because it is looser, it is um, kind of not that detailed. And it needs to have the quality and the light and the you know the punch in it. So I'm a captive audience. People expect me to do quite a good job, and so does my mother. There's a little sculpture standing right here. And this is a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's bigger. And you know it's 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 kind of it focuses the brain so much when I'm doing this that it, it, it really feels liberating for the ADHD type of brain to be able to feel this kind of flow a flow that one can get easily from um, alcohol sex, dance and stuff like that, but which of course has diminishing the returns and uh, you really don't want to uh, rely on alcohol and sex to feel alive, you want to do some work you love and that's what will keep you going through your life. People who are trying to buy themselves love through buying stuff, now, it's, it's never enough. And just to buy yourself some short blip and then you feel empty again. Believe me, I've tried it. I've used a more saving amount of time on spending money I should have saved. And many people say, oh, artists shouldn't be so concerned about money. But honestly, without money, you can't really do much, can you? So, I learned a little bit late to try to take care of my money. But I think I've understood it now. Money in the bank is better than no money in the bank. So, yeah. You see blue and red. It's very different, different. And the blue is also coming here on the dress because it comes the sunlight 
Then you have the daylight from outside. Um, but then, then kind of muffled daylight. It's evening. You get this beam of light coming in there, hitting her. Boom. I think this is over five years ago. Crazy. Oh, it's just like five years, I'm not just that, it's basically more than 5% of a lifetime. I mean, a year is 1% of a lifetime. I think wasting a fucking year, and it's a lifetime, it's not, it's not a joke, it's, it's actually, it's actually time, it's, it's, it's life. Should take it a little bit more serious. There's some loud here, there's some green, and there's some light here. And, uh, mm. It's very dark up there. We'll do that afterwards. Do this first. Just perfectly. Put it where it's supposed to be. Yeah, oh, it's going to be all of that. Can't be true. Yeah, I have. Mm. Sometimes the brain is tricking me, but it's up here. Actually, that lamp is here. No, it's actually there. And it's quite small. So I actually believed that it was lower. But I do think I painted her a little bit, tiny bit higher um, than in the photo. It's not easy to get it totally right. Like spot on. No, it's over. Actually, it's, it's smaller, so it comes over this one. It goes here. It's funny talking because there's a dialogue going on in my head. And. Uh, I speak now, uh, almost like hearing my own thoughts. It's a shame that I put it on. I'm trying to get the this color away so I can. down there and this one is here no it's higher see so, now there well approximately should actually be I hate doing mistakes that's going to annoy me later because the best thing is to get things right and uh, that gives you less 
corrections to do. Yeah, it's quite dark down there, so I just, just gonna put in a light. This pencil is also quite fucked up. Just so uh, throw it away. I have a lot of them anyway. Adjustments in the wet paint. I'm really hungry. Oh, I'm hungry. In, down, 
Anyway, you see the point. So, yeah, so what I'm doing now is kind of cleaning up the space around, uh, starting to put in some detail, tam tampering down stuff to focus the light. And I'm kind of starting, start up here, work myself. Uh, work with her and then I work myself out there and um, after that I will uh, dry and then I basically repeat that process so here it's not as bright as my eyes want to fool me to believe so and that is very important I can't have the lightest places are here and here and here and that's where most of the light will be focused but also here a little bit because the sun hits it's so much in there but it has to be a little bit different texture, uh, it can't be that high, uh, it can't be that sculptural or that much relief. The thickest parts will be in the absolute lightest areas. So, But it's a process. So we'll see what happens. <coughs>
That's the shadow of the lamp. There's some nice details in there, shadows crossing over there. So they're quite complex actually, how the light falls in. Also a shadow coming over here, just crossing over this, it's in here. Notice that most speculative artists today are working with a palette that is more kind of damped down. As you can see, I'm definitely not a photorealist. To me, it's about paint and yeah. It's kind of a bright. That's may might often be the problem with the taking stuff with a digital camera. You tend to tend to um, distort the colors. Not so talkative today. Mm -hmm. I'm talking so much to this camera, I'm getting sick of it. Um, and sometimes the best way to learn is just to watch. This painting is not typical for me. It's also a little bit different in the color. As you can see in the color I've been choosing here. Um, and that's simply because the motif have a difference. That is why some of my paintings are very blue, some are yellow. I even took some photographs with of a model with a very strong blue filter that made everything very blue except for 
certain parts and it, it had, had a very nice tone to it so I wonder if I'm gonna actually paint one of these paintings again just with a different hue so it's something lying on the table there So much I should do. Oh, I have so many beautiful objects I could paint. So much photographic material, so many objects, so many models, and so much political stuff. I have so much to do. I haven't got time to watch people getting eaten in. And um, walking dead and bullshit like that. <laughs> Let me see now. Time enough. One of my favorite movie clips is Rutger Hauer in the first Blade Runner movie when he sits with a dove and talks about the moments that will be lost in time like tears in the rain. He says time to die. One of the most beautiful scenes in cinematic history. The second Blade Runner was just full of fucking cliché. Like, oh, the environment. Oh, there is no more wood in the world. Wood is so expelled. Oh, fucking, fucking. So sad. It could have been such a great movie if they stayed away from all this political correct bullshit. I mean, if you have a planet with water and air, you can make things grow, period. Period. You can gene manipulate human beings, but you can't make plants that can fucking grow. Give me a break. Anyway, I hate when plots is just made of people that don't think. It's so typical. Typical bad guy, typical good guy. Blah, 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 blah. I don't think they can even make movies anymore. Sad. So move it so loud. Since there has to be some more yellow there. Sunlight there because it can't be that strong here and not in there, so it has to be this push, boom the sun. It's funny to think about that. We are made by sunlight or energy from the sun. Everything is made by that. The things we eat. Look, our dreams are made of sunlight. It's a beautiful thing. They say energy never disappears, but it's not really. It is true, but the energy we. when we give off energy, that energy we give off can't become a yeah, new sun or something that can be created into the type of energy that we need to survive. So energy doesn't ex doesn't disappear, but it just changes so it can't be used to anything. 
destructive. Low and high entropy, it's called. The second law of thermodynamics. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, just continue painting and I will show you more later. Okay. Yeah. The vividness of the colors in uh, reality is so different than, than I can see in the, in the movie or the video was so annoying actually well I guess I just have to live with it maybe I need a new camera or new lighting or something I don't know check it out later <clears throat> I do use very strong colors, so I guess that has, maybe that has something to do with it, it's hard to know. Contrast. There are a few places where you can enhance the contrasts, like here. I see red, I just see red. And my brain says red. <laughs> and if it gets dull, I tend to increase the hue or whatever. A light beam, beam of light hitting her skin. I don't have to get it right. And
So use your fingers. Okay, it's very bright. You know, of course, this is a very extremely vivid. Painting, as I've said before, and uh, I need to accept that and I'll try to hold back the colors, just go with the colors, just go all the way, and uh, don't care if it becomes a little bit too much. do the face a couple of more times on the day more focus on, on the other things so you know, focus first on the whole thing and then I go back and focus more on detail so that I no, we don't mix. Well, I could actually do some work, but I need to be a little bit careful here. So not, not hurry too much. It's very white here. She has a white dress with some red dots on it and these dots are actually quite difficult to get right uh, I will put in some white now in the lightest area you also have the shoulder that's also very bright so when you get these contrasts, you start to create this room. I put in very bright light now, so I can have something to work over. Kind of pushing, now see the difference between the light and the... And it's also, it's basically, that is a little bit brighter actually. Do like this, and I can see that that is a little bit brighter in reality. So I want to put some more on the forehead. Of course, that's also a very bright area. Was burning with color and light. Very beautiful. That is what happens when we uh, keep on painting over. It becomes more and more full of shape. Today I have to. I didn't. I was supposed to go and buy some paint today, but I actually overslept. Been working 24 7 lately, so.
Ja. Remember when I went to art school, those teachers said I should work more all over the place because I tend to be hung up in maybe one spot. And it's actually quite good advice to try to move around a little bit. Um, because It gives you a more dynamic overview. I didn't learn much painting in art school actually, I just learned more in drawing school because I had a teacher who loved painting. So, Cecil. Cecil. But I learned to think challenge my thoughts we had this Polish artist as a sculpture teacher was really scared his looks could scare the shit out of me <laughs> It was really brilliant. His name is Krzysztof Naszelowski. Really brilliant sculptor. And um, we had some some group thing in called Mikro Makro. And uh, we just weighed words and to objects and for some reason which also amazed him he was able to break through my wall of, of solipsism and teach me the difference between objective reality and a subjective opinion and that was basically the start of my journey into a more scientific mind from a more dreamy naive quasi religious nonsense where you believe that the wrong emotions basically are objective reality when you learn that, you become critical to everything, including yourself, and that's the most important person to be critical to. All growth comes from self-criticism and learning new things, and if you're not able to admit a mistake, you will never learn anything, actually. So. And the things that happened to me as an artist, Sisu and this sculpture teacher is the people who have who started or put the most uh, trace in me. I wouldn't have been me now how I am now without these moments or these people. But you can say that about everything, of course. I would have been somebody else. I would have probably, maybe, started the journey later. But it's hard to tell. It's very hard to tell, indeed. 
just think about this. Uh, it's very important because most people, they don't really think about it, but if you talk to people and they say, oh, uh, how, they say, maybe they say, oh, how did uh, existence come to, come to being and there has to be meaning and all kinds of stuff like that people are saying. I used to say, if there is no life after death, life is meaningless, therefore it has to be a life after death. But as a scientific mind knows, the universe knows, can you don't give a rat's ass about your existence. And, um, meaning, just because we want meaning and want purpose, and doesn't mean that it's there, because the universe actually don't need any objective purpose to exist. So, um, it just is. Reality is, period, as my sculpture teacher told me, looking at me with a, those deep brown eyes. I guess look like Jewish or something, but with deep brown eyes because I said, oh, but there has to be meaning and where does existence come from? And he said, well, existence exists and that's that. <laughs> and it was just so hard for me to accept this thought. But in the end, reason prevailed and uh, my mind started to open up new ideas and the old naive Knut Andrevik Solan just went away. My personality, however, is the same. I have the same energy, or the same, not energy, it's wrong word. I actually hate when people are misusing words like energy in a wrong way. Um, so I shouldn't do it myself. Now, my point is, oh, I see some mistakes, you know. Uh, so, despite that I changed my whole, basically everything I believed in went by the wayside, uh, I'm still the same person. So, despite you losing your religion or your worldview or changing, you won't actually lose yourself, you just change the way you see the world and uh, that is totally fine for some people it seems to be very scary I don't think it is so scary anymore actually I never thought it was scary Why, 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 children ask? Why, why, why? The 
At some point, you will hit the wall when you ask these questions. And that, that wall is at the edge of what we know about the universe. And we do actually know a lot. People don't know a lot. And that's why they keep asking stupid questions. But if you know what is knowable, you will know that we know a lot. And you will also know we don't know everything. And there might even be things that we can never know. Because infinity and time and... Uh, Physics may not even allow it, so it's quite depressing. We might run into a wall where we can't know anything more, and we won't even know it. We just keep looking. And not knowing that it's futile. And that's a good thing because we will keep on looking. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe it's more there. Anyway. You see I work in directions here. Like if you do that, it dies. Do this, it bubbles up. And the same thing is done here. So you have to work in directions. Yeah. It's too broad actually <clears throat> because this goes down there yes. you see now there there yeah should go in there or something That's what is good. You know, you keep on overpainting, and in the end, all the touching, all the touches, all the overpaintings, overpaints, will create some quite beautiful textures. And that is basically why I would never care to be a photorealist, because you're not able to paint, be a painter. I want to paint. I want to be. A, I'm a painter. I'm not a copying machine. Now, I'm not trying to say that because I'm not skilled in. I, I'm not skilled in the same way as David Casson and these people. I have to admit that they have a brilliant technique for the purpose of their own paintings, what they are looking for. But for me it's not what I'm looking for. I like the paintedness of Rembrandt and Turner and all these old masters. And uh, that is the thing I think these photorealists painters often don't have and uh, yeah it becomes too rigid in a way anyway I'm gonna stop yapping around and just do the paint almost 26 minutes I hope you got something out of my rants thank you very much okay.
KKK. Okay, I am working with the hand and dress, and it's very time consuming because there are so many subtle details in it. Kind of drives me nuts actually. I have to keep on doing these very subtle breaststrokes because this hand is actually in motion in the photo I use so uh, it doesn't have any detail and the fingers are kind of dissolved so to get this to look right I really have to put my skill sets to work but I noticed there were some nice motions here which can explain some of the fingers which you don't actually see but you kind of see the shadows and the motion of them so I'm gonna kind of use that to create a nice illusion And it's also important to think about the stuff that is around it. That you use color that creates a sense of motion. Put the uh, different uh, primary colors up against one another, up against the uh, red and the green and the blue and the orange everything that would normally make you feel that something were actually real in a way not in a way but yeah I should do a little bit like this it's a nice handle on this quite expensive stuff here yeah. But it works, it's pretty good. I had one that broke down, but I got a new one on, on uh, the warranty. No, I need to get this light in. Just get this, clean this up, get that sunlight in. There's different nuances, some are green, some are violet, some are yellow, uh, some reds. And um, I think for most eyes, they, they, would, they just wouldn't have seen it. If you haven't trained your eyes to see these colors and nuances, you, you wouldn't be able to see them. There is no fucking way. Anyway. Okay, there's some light colors there. Uh, it's very hard to see, but it's, of course it's brighter, not that bright. I 
and we cross kind of into the hand without and then I'm gonna have some yellowish reddish stuff to And they have all these small red flowers so I have on this dress. I painted this dress, I think it was twice before actually. And we always meet the same problem uh, for some reason. Really difficult to see. I think they were red actually. Yeah. As you see, it's the same principle that I use in, in my still lives. There's not that much of a difference. This painting is quite, as I say, it's quite dissolved. It's not too much detail. I mean, it's more emotion in, in emotion, and um, details are blurred out. If I use a photo that was extremely clear, the approach would be extremely clear. because my stomach hurts a little bit and this lump maybe it's because of my heart training that I some of my intestines moved a little bit Do too much heart training. I can't get over. Maybe I do too much. I haven't done much now since I'm painting so much, but there are things I do that my 20 year olds do. And my trainer aside. <laughs> yeah. But he's a special case, I think. Just have to try to drag this this way. Keep it dissolved, but also try to give it some substance at the same time. And that is actually quite difficult. Uh, that is to control that is not easy. Yeah, I think that was quite nice. Hmm. I can't really get that.
Yeah, that's better. Okay, let me get some. You see, I just kind of drag all the colors together in the direction she moves her arm. Actually, I have a huge painting of a burlesque dancer who is moving her arm and I'm gonna start on it soon. I made a sketch many years ago and I for some reason stopped working on it and it's the same thing to make these details come alive. Is. She was actually a go-go dancer on the New York Burlesque Festival. And um, yeah. Gonna do a New York exhibition sooner or later. It should be sooner because I wanna be able to go to New York more often. I love that city. The fantastic art and buildings, people. It's amazing. I think that became quite quite cool actually. Actually People are going to ask, oh, why is it so? Can't you paint a hand? <laughs> That's so typical. That is why I have to make it make it into a convincing. Okay, she's moving that hand. That is how it is on a photograph when you have taken a picture that is in motion and if you get it right people will actually see it and accept it so but if you do it a lousy way people wrongly see it as wrong and we don't want that do we no way Maybe we should focus on this a little bit. How I'm working. How intricate it actually is. Oh, maybe I'll start to make as usual. Thank you, fucker. I should definitely have a better work schedule so I could avoid. <laughs> This shit.
a shadow forming on the dress. I have to enhance it with dragging some light up around it. And then I also Just gonna take a little break and then I will go in and focus more. Okay. Let us come closer. It's very yellow. It's not that yellow in reality, just as you know. That's still my problem with this camera. It just doesn't feed me the right colors. Will feed you the right colors, but we uh, just have to live with it, I guess. You see, okay, these things have to go. Just gonna, and then I'm gonna do that thing. Here and I want that red to be in the flower to be more vivid. Yeah. A little pink like this. It's nicer. And there's also some more there. So now it kind of starts to become a little bit more logical. There's also some here, which comes in there. But even more important, there is a shadow here. Maybe not shadow, but. Uh, Motion in the dress, I would say. Oops. I threw away a lot of time today, also, it's so sad. It's kind of when I'm stressed out and I try to want to finish stuff, I keep on start doing other things like. Cleaning or making ammo. Doing other shit. Doing yoga. <laughs> Watching Trump rally. <laughs> oh shit. Well, that's me. Strange that I get anything done at all actually when it comes down to it. I think Trump rallies are some of the most entertainment, <laughs> entertaining thing I can watch. It's better than TV series. It's my phone. Yeah. Early in the morning. It's nine in the morning. Just as you know. And I must focus and concentrate because now I messed up a little bit right there. Oh, not really, not that bad. See up here has to be some yellowish with white. Clear, I think the face became quite nice, quite fast. I don't think I'm gonna fuck around with it too much. I would actually like to make a full size. I have a series of 
of uh, paintings of her when she was dancing or posing in that light and I would like to paint them in full size and then go really really deep into every fucking detail but I need the time I have so much beauty to make and that is also why I'm trying to build up my Patreon so I can, could actually get some income so I can actually free me free time from all other bullshit that I could only paint on the things that it's going to be exhibitions or big projects I mean I do earn quite well on my paintings but as I say I spend a hell of a lot of time doing things to earn money instead of only earning money on projects that I have to and of course it's a luxury problem it's like living in Norway and complaining that you're poor I mean there are no poor people in Norway even a fucking street no sorry even a street junkie is rich in Norway compared to most people in the world so for me to stand in Norway and being Sorry for I can't do exactly what I want all the fucking time. It's kind of a solipsism that I should be ashamed of in a way. But the problem is that we all, even the people, I mean you see people committing suicide. People who are, who have everything. I mean, everything. Just look at, look at. That, that chef that killed himself a while ago, this TV guy. I mean, he had everything. And there was this woman in New York who also killed herself. She was a media person, and I think she was a designer or something. And I mean, she's living in a beautiful apartment in fucking New York. And she is not pleased and she kills herself. I mean, what is this shit? And here I am, in the world's richest country, complaining over, and doing paintings, a thing that is pure luxury. To do this is just a handful of people in the world who can do because they are usually living in a country who are so poor that the thing they have to do to make a living makes it impossible for them to to try to build a career or something like that it is basically a miracle I don't believe in miracles because I'm an atheist but basically a miracle if someone comes out of there, as you've seen, some artist or some football player or some dancer or whatever. So this girl dancing who was in the faelas of, yeah, in the, yeah, and she had managed to become a dancer in the, in the, in some, some, yeah, she was a dancer high up. But I mean, that is so rare. It was really ridiculous. Anyway, so I shouldn't complain. I should shut the fuck up and do the best I can. Stop whining. Okay, sorry for my rants here, but sometimes it just, just hit me that I should shut the fuck up and just do my job. And I think 
or although viners living in Norway should do exactly that because we are privileged beyond fucking belief so I'm standing here with a pencil on the planet earth Visiting, visiting around the sun, a fusion reactor, in a, in a weird universe, a chance for me to exist is like, or coming into existence, we like, basically zero, just chemical, just chance, well, someone had to be born, it happened to be me. Um, And I'm sad because I can't do what I want. Yeah, well, you see in the West or all over the world, actually, wherever you are, it is always the easy PC shit that wins. Things like Big Brother and football or sports and stupid uh, stupid uh, entertainment program like Big... yeah, did I say that? So, or in Norway you have this farmen, there's this farm this farmer who's gonna find love and you know, oh, so so ridiculous people are watching this shit and uh, you wonder why there are poor in the world I mean gee get a life I mean I've been watching I uh, watching porn is better it's it's better to watch porn I think because porn doesn't really pretend to be real or maybe they do pretend to be real but you know my point. Hopefully, you understand what I'm saying. So yeah, I, um, I think humans are as as Bill Higgs said. Who was it? George Carlin. We're a virus with shoes. But we are a beautiful virus with shoes. We are a virus who can, at best, do fantastically great things. Beautiful things. Good deeds. And, yeah. And, um, Science and poems and films and research about how things are, how the universe are working and all this, and then boom, you have porn and Big Brother. It's like it creates a dissonance in me. Like it, you, you, I want to kill them all in one instance and. The next, I want to just love them all. <laughs> and I mean, if there was a God, which there is not, I'm pretty sure there are not any gods, they would probably think the same thing. Am I going to kill these maggots or am I going to embrace them and love them? That would have been my dilemma. Let me restart this or let it play out. Because there is so much beauty, but also so much unnecessary pain. And uh, I just wish we could try to do something about it. And attacking Donald Trump 
It's not the solution. I'm sorry. It's not even the problem. At, the, at worst, it's a symptom, symptom of something that went wrong because suddenly we needed a person to come in and as a wrecking ball just to fucking restart everything. And I think he's doing quite a good job. I actually wonder if I'm going to paint a nice portrait of him. Because it's such a strange phenomenon. There is just one of him in the world. And the more I study the guy, the better I like him. So, strange. And that's, that is coming from... A Norwegian artist who is firmly a non-nationalist uh, who would like to have a basically a global social security net that made give food in the stomach and school to all children and uh, I mean I'm an anti-theist, I'm totally against religion, and the Republican Party is yapping about God can actually drive me crazy. I'm not American, but I, I mean, everybody's, everybody in the West is American in some way or another, because America has been the thing that has been has made the world safe actually they did mistakes of course they did they did Vietnam and they did things in South, uh, South America and other places in the world that wasn't that wasn't um, good but compare United States to Russia or to China or any other crazy dictator like Stalin or something like that, there is no comparisons at all. <sighs> Not at all. America is the reason we have democracy. America is the reason why we have freedom. Because they were the protectors of this freedom. They weren't the necessarily inventors of this freedom. But they were the it's like the Europeans had to go to America or the world population had to go to America to create a country that would come back to Europe and other places in the world and save the day. We had to come together on a different continent to be able to work together towards a common future. And in a way, I, th I see... America or the United States as if you could think that America was a globe that is how perfect not perfect of course but that is how a good form of globalism would work you have all cultures you have all religions despite that I'm against religion I, I'm a free speech absolutist so so of course people should be allowed to believe in any nonsense they want to and um, should not be intimidated by others and their beliefs they should be challenged but not threatened if you get my point um, we have to create America to withstand the Russians, the European slaughter last century, which ended basically with Bosnia. I mean, the Americans saved the Bosnian Muslims. They saved them, actually saved them from annihilation. And Europe as usual, did nothing, just watched. So, yeah. So in a way, we are all American. 
And if I were American right now, I would have voted for Donald Trump, despite that I'm... Because... I Okay, it's a very easy... Because we have to take the power back from China. We can't give China economic power over us because they are extremely fascist. Uh, Russia has no sweat because their economy is so low that it's like the economy of one state in America, Florida or something, or Spain or Italy or some small country. Uh, despite they are huge. So they are not a big threat to us, but China is a threat. And they have a very expansionist uh, agenda, which the left has just totally ignored. And that is why we now, in Norway, are sending fish from Norway, basically around the globe, to China, wrapped in to packages, cut up, wrapped in, and then sent back to Norway, into our stores. And we used to be a country of fisheries and of stuff like that. And now we are using oil revenue to keep our country alive. While we are, of course, yapping about saving the environment. So, taking the jobs back from China taking the military power away from China and stopping Kim Il-yong, stuff like that. That is why, and of course, my support for Israel is also total. So I agree with him there. That is because I've studied real history, not the history my, my friends on the left, or ex-friends of the left wanted to in the, or insisted that everybody should believe him. Uh, I used to be a strong opponent to the state of Israel. And I used to call them Nazis. Like the left are still doing. And it was totally based on ignorance. Have you noticed that the left is calling everybody Nazi? That they never actually call anyone Stalin. Oh, you're like Stalin. <laughs> I mean, to compare Trump to Hitler is just ridiculous. I mean, he gave his... His, let me say favorite well daughter to a Jew and a point that a Nazi actually pointed out that they didn't support Trump because he had given his daughter to a Jew so to call him a Nazi or Hitler is just so stupid that it is almost so stupid that it that you, you, it's like me once because I'm supporting Israel, the right to exist, the right to have a country, the right to protect themselves against jihadism and Islamists. Uh, I was a, a person on the left called a Jew loving Nazi. Yeah, you figured that out. A Jew-loving Nazi. I'm a humanist. And that means that I am for taking care of our fellow man. I'm not a nationalist, so I disagree with Trump and his nationalism. But I do agree with the fact that we need a very strong America as a buffer to things like China, Iran, 
and other thugs in the world who would take no, wouldn't even think about it. Like, just look at Putin's Russia. He would take back the old Soviet Union in a heartbeat if he could. But he can't do that because we have America. And when Trump came in and called Kim Il Jong little rocket man, I just knew this is gonna work. And it seems to work. Actually, I wanted to remove him, so I'm a little bit disappointed because every dictator should be removed by force. Dictatorship is, as I see it, is uh, slavery. And North Korea is a slave state. The population is slaves of the leadership. And I think they should first be given a given a date and um, to walk away offer, uh, offer they couldn't refuse as they say and if they didn't there should be a UN charter that says that any country in the world can take this asshole out whenever they want to because he is pressing his own population and he is in no business to oppress 25 million people or how many that he would happen to have. So I would kill leaders to get rid of the dictatorship and give people freedom. That was also the reason why I became um, I did agree with Christopher Hitchens on the Iraq war. That was actually the right thing to do to remove Saddam. I also think it was the right thing to do to remove Gaddafi and uh, Ortega and people like that. It's a shame that Iran came in and created this uh, civil war in and start anticipating or building on a thousand year old war between Shia and Sunni which actually took away something that could have been beautiful for the population of Iraq But I guess that is how the world works. Anyway, that was a long rant. So that's my politics. I do not support Trump because of his intellect or emotional stability. <laughs> But he is intelligent in the right things where it matters for the job he has now. And he is changing the world to the better. So to all you Trump haters out there. That's my view. And I studied Trump to come to that conclusion. I studied his past, read his books. I listened to an audiobook when I'm painting and um, old old um, interviews when he was actually popular in America and everybody was actually at some point asking why he didn't want to become president. Even Oprah Winfrey pressed him on this many many times when he was young and he was very popular. I'm also against, I'm, I'm uh, for helping people, common, I'm also for common responsibility for a fellow man, 
but this can't be solved. It just can't be solved by moving peoples on any level. There is not enough resources to move the poor or desperate world to the West. That will not just kill the economy, it will kill Western culture and it will also kill the planet actually because of people in the West are already using six to nine times more than they should. And if you take the poor part of the world and you move it to the place where they use the most resources per capita, it would destroy everything. It would like be like you move okay, you move a person from some poor place and he immediately you are using six times if you then move four billion poor or seventy million refugees to the West that would amount to <laughs> billions of people. Just the refugees would actually be in resources one billion more people. And we are already out of resources. We are already using too much energy, too much fossil fuels. And what's going to pay for it? What, what is paying for this in, in Norway? Oil. Remember that. It's extremely important. It is oil which is paying for it. And um, it's bullshit. We have to move resources, we have to stop world population growth. We should have a global two-child policy, which of course the religious are making impossible. Because as the Christians say, every sperm is holy. And the Muslims, they say, Allah, oh, if God will, God willing, uh, Inshallah, I think it is. Um, and um, yeah and also the cultures uh, many cultures are saying the more children you have the higher status you have and it also is a clear thing that the way out of this is to empower women to be um, to be uh, um, masters over their own reproduction and uh, bodies that would solve a hell of a lot of problems give women power and they won't breed children like racehorses for religious fanatics and men who look at them as property no human being is anyone's property. No one. zippity doo da So that's my politics. An atheist, left-wing, traditionally left-wing. Or am I? Or maybe I'm just a libertarian. No, I'm not libertarian because I think we need rules. We can't leave everything up to. to um, I don't believe in free will. Uh, anyone who has been in love actually should stop believing in free will. Or been had an addiction or anything that impairs your capability to choose. It's funny, it only becomes clear when you get into that extreme situation. Like when I was in love six years ago and I couldn't stop thinking about that girl. I was thinking about her waking. I wasn't, even was when I was awake, I was thinking, I, sorry, when I was sleeping. So it's strange how and she was a complete bitch also and 
It's funny, it wasn't her personality, it was just biology. The girl I'm painting now was also a girlfriend and she was a nice girl, really nice girl. And um, it's strange how things turns out. The ones who deserve your attention are getting it. And the ones who are total cunts gets it. So, yeah. Well, I may have um, increased attention a little bit myself. You shouldn't do or say bad things knowingly to hurt anyone, especially when they are deeply in love with you. You should have a little bit more. I think that's where. If you don't feel any empathy, it doesn't really matter. I don't feel basically much for, on a personal level, for any person I don't know personally. So I don't go around with my empathy on my sleeve. But sympathy, pure sympathy, should be enough to understand what you should do or say, or how you should act. So, I don't trust empathy. Empathy is a junk feeling. It should be... Uh, it should be uh, only used in the bedroom and in, in clothes, like for your children. For your spouse, for your lovers, and friends, family, but never bring it into politics. What I also like with Trump is that he, they have thrown everything on him. Everything. And it just makes him stronger. And uh, he's 70 years old and he can do this as 70 year old. And it's just fucking amazing. So yeah, even if I didn't like him, I should see him as a superhero. Yay! Okay, that was a long rant about politics stuff. So I guess there will be some haters. Maybe some loss of, of uh, followers. If somebody hears these rants. I've been ranting a lot in this video. Because why not? Why not just get it out? And I don't have to bother my friends with it too much. Yeah. Oh, isn't that nice? Anyway. See ya. So, I have been cleaning up the room a little bit. And it's getting better. Sadly, I don't think I'm gonna able to get it all the way into to where I want to 
to be tonight, today. <laughs> but it's going to be okay. A little touch up tomorrow. I'll have today. Medium. So <coughs> I did some <coughs> nice things over here. I see I could actually do a little bit more. <coughs> There's this Norwegian woman called Harriet Bakker, <coughs> and I was thinking a little bit about her <coughs> when I chose to paint this because she did some very beautiful things with um, extreme detail. Not not extreme, but uh, sorry, not extreme detail, but extre extreme um, painted paintedness. Her paintings was extremely thick paint, and I should actually go to the National Gallery and <clears throat> have a look at those paintings again because. Um, She really shows how you can use oil color, both both very thick layers, but at the same time keep the aesthetic dimension. Uh, it's kind of a Vermeer type of painting, just with more. Impressionist, impressionist elements. That's, I think that is the correct way. The shadow that I'm trying to paint in now. Um, shadow. doesn't have to be perfect just have to be um, it has to be uh, rational it has to look plausible Totally correct. Um, it doesn't matter as long as so it looks okay. That's nice. That's the kind of things I like. I mean, just the aesthetic, the kind of the natural brush stroke that just appears in your least and you just make you make an effect, and boom, there you have something really beautiful, and it's. Nothing advanced, it's not 
Okay. <coughs> Good thing now <clears throat> I was asked if I let my paintings dry. <clears throat> um, and yeah, sometimes I do. This this one working like this can be very good to work wet in wet because uh, as you saw my brush strokes mingled with the other ones and created some nice textures so yeah so sometimes you do this and sometimes you do that it depends of what you want <coughs> Yeah. Well, not quite. <clears throat> that darkness here has actually a lot of redness in it, so I need to be careful with, with some of the black. It has red and blue, different blue, because there's a very blue light coming in from the side. So just kind of push this down a little bit. Make some and it actually worked. Wow. That worked like crazy. That was liberating. Huh. Who would have known? Okay. Wow. Surprised me. Not that easy is to surprise. <clears throat> To dissolve that arm a little bit because if this is moving that also has to move of course you can't move one place and not move another place so in a way it has to be
Bring out a new pencil for this. a little bit. I'm painting very dry now. That is because I want to have some control over it. If you start painting with a lot of oils, it will you will lose this um, sculptural trait that can actually so you can basically build a sculpture I'm doing it I enjoy more that and let, letting it be so fluid also <coughs> strengthen that shadow a little bit before I because the contrast between the arm and the wall behind there is quite one of the few places that it will be a little bit hard because of the intense light behind there much too little Hard to tell oh, That's what can happen when you start fucking with things that you actually were pleased with and uh, just gonna make it a little bit better and then everything just turns to shit because you couldn't stay the fuck away.
Should do that touch up when I'm less tired. Such a cool detail. Just bam. Okay. seven hours ago. And that's the problem. I was trying to... I usually try to find some peace and then start painting. But I think the best thing is just to start painting. Not try to find some go through all my rituals just bullshit just go paint just do the work and inspiration comes naturally while you work you don't need to hear that oh my Waiting for inspiration to start this and start that. Inspiration has to be produced by you. It won't come to you. Usually when um, inspiration come to you, so after two bottles of red wine <laughs> and then you can't do anything and the day after you are just as uninspired again as you were before you had the fucking alcohol. So yeah, forget about that. Life should inspire us to do shit. Life is so short too, so I mean, if you don't do it now, you're not gonna get a second chance. So, go do it. Do it, do it. Do it, do it. It's way too red. She has this beautiful orange red hair. I love red hair. Some of the most beautiful thing 
I know of. For some reason, girl that I've read here smells so good. I don't want to give them There's some pheromones or something that drives me crazy. I think it's a white skin or something, I don't know. But I also met dark haired girl that was kind of the same. Some of the same uh, smell. Just a kind of sculpture. So I'm not gonna go any deep into detail on this one. See here, no texture at all. There, a lot. Why? Relief. You build a relief like that. That shadow reminds me of a horrible sculpture I made in art school. It was the, you got this uh, the concept was a book and of course I started making this figure with a book like this, crawling together and of course I had no idea <laughs> how to finish it, how to... but actually when you gave me the times I did I did one bust uh, a head sculpture and I really got it right it's kind of surprising really because but when it was more abstract it wasn't me I couldn't it was this girl that asked me if I could do some um, if I could do some uh, Uh, illustration or painting to some fairy tales and I just had to tell her it was a could have been fun too but I just had to tell her that I can't do that because I can't really draw anything without having something to look at I, I don't need to copy it Write out exactly as it looks, but I need, I need something, a reference point, something to look at. So I just had to tell her no. Of course, there was also no money in it, and that. So who's gonna pay for it? You can just make stuff and not get money. Oh, 
Well, a nice gesture. She really likes my paintings. So. Doing stuff like this is always on a knife's edge. Do one too many, and boom. It goes from natural to catastrophe. Because the light is reflecting in her hair on that side. That was actually quite nice. Uh, underpinned it. But it's also a little bit deeper here. So, very nice blue green color. That explains that shadow. because of the red hair. <sighs> or something. to do something right there because the chin is coming a little bit more out but it scares the shit out of me because it takes so long I, I, I'm just gonna leave it now That's called an impression. <laughs> Reference point. Okay. So I can't do it without that reference point.
subscribe here. There is some I really need to get some sleep. I've been painting for basically 24 hours, so I guess it's on and off, of course. I don't be painting all the time, but I can feel that my arthritis is starting to bug me so getting around my hips I'm sorry to I've been standing so long it becomes so static that the pressure point is becoming hysterical up tomorrow. I'm going to quit for now. The shadows is too strong, seem drawn instead of painted, that is no good, so just make the shadows a little bit elusive. funny now because I've lost, totally lost the sense of day, night, even yesterday I, I or today, whatever, I actually didn't really know it was Monday or Tuesday or is it Tuesday? I was actually not sure. But, uh, because I had been working through the night and uh, yeah like now 
I slept until almost it? Oh, that looked better. Mm -hmm. Say yeah. yeah. That one has to be strong. Both of them, just one of them. That's this one. I'm just gonna have a highlight, which is here. Now that looked more alive, huh? Say yeah. Okay. happening down here. So I'm just gonna fix that. Actually, it goes more in. That's a bitch. This one goes more in like this. That's some stuff like that you suddenly see when you have been working it up for a long time and then boom. Oh shit. That was wrong. That was wrong. And that was cultural appropriation. Do you see that? And then boom, it was there, right where it should be. Small important things that makes the whole thing tick, like what I'm going to do now. This one, there, with highlight on that side, which has to be. Can't do all the detail there now, anyway. I'm gonna start doing one painting like this a month from now. And rules for how many things I'm gonna do each month. I have goals. This many still lives, this many this, this many that. So that I, oh, that's quite beautiful now. So that I, um, and I'm even gonna start writing up my hours. I'm a little bit tired of people asking me 
how long a painting takes. I'm not going to tell anyone, of course, but it's nice to know how much time I put in to every painting. wet when I send them. That's a little bit too bad actually because some things can happen. Yeah, that's quite cool. Okay, I really need some sleep, so I'll just finish it up tomorrow. Okay, see ya. Wait a second. Yeah, what's that shit I was, uh, was going to do? Not so bad.
Okay, I'm hurting all over, which is a sign from the body or a message from the body. Please, sir, go to bed, please. Please. I'm dying. Please. <laughs> There's a very strong flexion down here. Actually, a small one over there, and there, and here actually. <laughs> My arm is making sounds. <laughs> Jeez. So you see I'm painting wet and wet, but I don't use any medium when I do it. You do that and it becomes fluid and you can't really control it. So with that note I rest my case for today. I think, yes, I do. You saw this? No, you probably didn't. Oh yeah, you did, yeah. Uh, how it had address in the painting. Okay. Okay. I'm going to focus on the face. And... Um, yeah. Yeah, I did see I had done some small mistakes that should be corrected. Like this one. Very easy to do. There's mistakes. Well, this is only. This, it is. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this 100% look like her because it's. You know, if I can get close to the photo. Well, the photo looks like her, so that is kind of bullshit. It's just an excuse. So, yeah, I should be able to get close. The problem is I am i don't have so much time, actually, on it. So, I might have to do some compromises there. But then again, it's a very... It's a very... Uh, impressionist painting it is not a photorealist project maybe I'll do some more of that later because I have a lot of very nice photos I'm gonna paint and I'm going to start to paint big and I'm also going to make one 
of every big painting I'm painting, I'm thinking I'm going to do one smaller one, like this painting, that size. And there are several reasons for that. One is that it's easier for me to make a living with smaller paintings. Uh, it's not all customers who can afford paintings. Uh, that is the biggest ones I make. Also, it is very good training to do both big and small. Uh, at some point it becomes so small that it's, it's a problem uh, and you can't really get it right because of the limitations in uh, size so but everything doesn't have to be so fucking big I will first get it a little bit right and then I will start annihilating those lines because I don't want lines per se, I want it to be more fluid than that. I see that the cheek has to come a little bit more out. So her face and also here her I wanna make what I would love to do is become more like a Vermeer uh, or paint more like Vermeer in combination with Rembrandt with some impressionist uh, links to what I do I would also like to concentrate so I can get up to 12 hours at least 10 hours efficient work time a day and then maybe have like uh, I think 6 hour free time I noticed I had my phone up and it told me I used listen to this this is fucking crazy Four, over four and a half hours with screen time. Screen time. Looking at my fucking phone. A day. But of course, I guess it, hopefully it is, um, when I'm at the gym, I usually play music from my phone. So I really do hope it adds that into the equation. Because... Four hours screen time and that is not even taking all the other data into the equation and that is just crazy uh, things like data should be something I do to enhance my business or spread my artwork it should not be a pastime and it should not be a way to get instant gratification so that you can feel good about yourself chatting with people you don't know that you're never gonna meet 
It's just bullshit. That is really, really bullshit. So yeah. It's nice to meet people and keep in touch. But all this crazy waste of time is just nonsense. And I won't do it. I won't be part of it. So I'm gonna be more careful from now on. If I'm gonna write an article, I just write an article who writes something, I just do it and I post it. And since I know how most arguments are going, I don't really need to repeat myself arguing with people that are just there to argue. That too, I used extreme amount of time on the atheist cause and stuff like that. And it was it's kind of a learning process. It's, it's important cases, but don't let it become. It's like yeah, become a problem. Don't let it take over your life. For fuck's sake. Yeah, I'm actually starting to look like her a little bit. I think that eye is going to be a little bit more open. Oh, my world has to be a little bit more up. No idea what kind of energy that goes into this. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. It's like that with everything. If you're a world champion in chess and you quit doing chess for a month, you will have a serious problem. It's the same thing with painting. That is actually how people quit. Because they start slowly to not do it. Then when they start doing it again, becomes a little bit harder to do it and then there's a slippery slope in the end it becomes so difficult that people actually quit and uh, same thing with training same thing with everything you do the important thing is never to quit just keep Doing it, keep evolving your skills, keep banging that drum. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, and there's a very nice reddish thing just inside there. Kind of confirms a look that was quite nice wasn't it I think so I have to work through the whole thing today, so it's going to be a long night and then I have to work with a couple of still lives also, so I'll be finished working, it's now about half past or two o'clock or half past two in the morning and I will continue painting until at least 10 or 11 tomorrow then I will sleep for 7 hours then I will go to the gym and do some yoga some 
not too hard. I was actually going to try and take fondo, but that would be impossible. Anyway, um, it's impossible because it's too hard. I'm training with this Iranian dude, which is really hard training. And when I'm stressed out with my painting, I can't use that much energy on hard training. I like, love training hard. It's the best, one of the best things I know. Really, really hard training. It's kind of a lifeblood for me. But when I do, I'm going to do exhibitions. I just need to slow it down and make take the all the energy I usually use in the gym. Just pour it into my paintings, and it works every time. But it also should tell me something that maybe, just maybe, I should slow a little bit down in general and try to put more of that gym time into my paintings because sometimes less is actually more. I can better be in better shape by actually doing less. If I listened to that voice so many years ago, I wouldn't have my arthritis problems and stuff like that by now. So, but I'm the kind of guy I kind of have to learn everything the hard way. <laughs> so ridiculous. So, you see what I'm doing in this painting now? Just shaping everything. Some shadow here. Some nice shadow. Lips are very red. I wonder why. You know, it's so hard to meet exactly that look she has. She kind of looks down to the side of her eyes. I can kind of see her pupils in there. And you can feel that they are on the side there.
Okay. Her lips. So strange here because they are so. Everything is so subtle. I use the back of my brush to kind of even it out. So many things you can do. Use your nails and you know, these things. So scrape it up again to get better. Over now to get it to glide better. This is why it's quite nice to work with small things because you can also you kind of get in touch with it in a different way. As I say, they are not so incredibly big, and they are possible, they can possibly be sold. I, I do sell my big paintings too, don't get me wrong, but it also takes a hell of a lot of time to paint them. I have some, but yeah, you know. Time, I shouldn't whine about the time I use to paint uh, because I've been wasting so much time and if I took the time I wasted on TV series and stuff like that and put it in straight right into painting <laughs> I would have had a hell of a lot more time so you know, I told myself never to see an episode of Walking Dead again. I've seen the whole series and I decided that after this need and bullshit were over, which is, of course it isn't, um, I was just going to quit altogether. Don't go back. And if I want, did go back, I would pick myself up, go into the backyard and just go to my bathroom and just execute myself. Now, last night I broke two promises. I did actually download one of the new Walking Dead. And I also did not execute myself, so I broke two promises at once. Um, what I got out of it is two things. I wasted another hour of my precious life on this horrible bullshit. Uh, I think I want to make a video where I talk about wasting fucking time because it's such an important thing how we are just really wasting our lives on all kinds of bullshit instead of focusing this precious 
little time we have in life on things that really can make our lives better and build ourselves up that we can um, really produce things that makes us happy but anyway I was watching this crap this fucking crap one more time and I just felt so sick it's like like a, a almost like if you have watched some really sleazy disgusting porn some horrible shit something you are really not proud of this is how I felt and the episode was just total fucking bullshit and I should explain why in a video but it's, it is so badly written it's so badly played out it's, it's, it's just now just take this how come how come how fucking calm they can they are in a city actually in Washington and they are going into this museum to pick up a fucking wagon and a plow from the wild west because they need this wagon as if they can't find any fucking thing anywhere in that city and of course they are riding horses and I have no idea where they got them from uh, and a plow they had to find a plow in a museum so they could make food in their sanctuaries I mean first of all any idiot should be able to make a wagon out of anything second of all they do have cars oh, there is no much gasoline left they say but so produce some fucking gasoline you have all the knowledge in the world and all the libraries and stuff and you probably also have the resources lying around everywhere and then of course some guy gets bitten because they suddenly are running away from a bunch of flesh eating zombies who for some reason for some weird fucking reason can still walk around while rotting and the only thing you have to do is to stab them in the neck or in the head anywhere it used to be you have to find some point in the back of the head but now it's just random you cut here you cut there it doesn't matter so this is what that fucking series has come down to and this guy of course get bitten and you have this nonsense of uh, him dying slowly and blah 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 and everybody's crying again and then you have this long scene with his parents and bloody 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 and finally this asshole for some been around now who created a hilltop is finally hanged because he tries to kill one of his well, main characters because of this kid died and he got his father to try to 
Okay, but but it's it's just so fucking bad. It is so so incredibly bad, bad, bad that wasting a single hour on your life on something like that should make anyone wants to want to kill himself. So my point is if you are an artist or you are a person that will have, that has a, some ambition just some ambition focus on that don't fall into this trap of wasting your life on bullshit like I have done for years I mean I've seen good series like Breaking Bad and I'm actually gonna see looking forward to seeing how Game of Thrones turns out because it's a brilliant series with enormous amount of, uh, of it's not the visual effects it's a whole storyline it's just brilliantly written it is I believe in in stuff there and then you have Better Call Saul which I also find fascinating it's probably because I loved Breaking Bad so much. But anyway, when I'm done watching Game of Thrones and uh, Saul, I'm going to quit TV series once and for all. Because there are series I started to see and I just stopped. I'm so sick of sitting on my ass watching stupid series that I come to this point where there is no fucking way that I'm gonna waste any more of my precious time on entertainment if I'm gonna watch yeah like I used to do more of watching science documentaries learning something when I start when I start uh, when I, I'm, I'm gonna relax or do something like that I just Learn something at the same time. Instead of wasting my time on bullshit. Use knowledge as ent entertainment. So yeah. That is my advice to any artist. Actually, I was listening to The Art of the Deal of Donald Trump. And if you see how this guy, been liking, they him or love him, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle I like stuff he does and I dislike other things but I in general I think he's a positive force actually for change uh, but of course things I do not like like Republican Party's religious nonsense and stuff like that I like the way he taunts his opponents, how he taunts the media, which actually deserves it. But then, to the point, the point is that he talks about what what's his driving force in that book, and it isn't the money. It isn't. Uh, it isn't nothing. It's just getting things to work making the deals 
doing the work. As he says, you have such such much, much time on the planet in existence and to make this time feel meaningful you have to do meaningful things um, so you see even, even Donald Trump can have if you're a hardcore hater which most are because they are in my view ignorant about who he really is. Um, he's right, and he's actually, when it comes to that, worth listening to. He is also 70 years old. He managed to become president against absolutely all odds, everything against him. And that in itself, even if you hate him, should make him into some kind of hero or something because managing to do what he did is just fucking amazing so anyway it is about not wasting time it is about creating some sense of purpose in life Creating a yeah sense of purpose, and this painting stuff is actually giving me this sense of purpose. It's so so weird when I'm standing here doing this. I'm fucking home. I'm just home feels right I'm at my spot it's, it's mine it is me and this I do hope some of you listen to what I'm saying and if you're an artist or are in doubt or why you should do these things don't be because why the hell not? Why shouldn't you go for what you love? Why should you view everything you do in comparison to what is done before or what is meaningful or what is no? It is about you. It is about a feeling of being alive. Period. And if you can actually get to earn some money while doing what you love, you have lived a great, great life. So don't give up and keep working. Yeah, that changed dramatically when I did that. Most things is quite difficult. Actually, now she looks kind of cranky. <laughs> it's so strange. I just do a few things and then she went from subtle. Ah, it was this probably. Because when you do that, they seem more hard. The face. Ah, it changed the whole facial expression, she looks disgusted now, instead of relaxed. Why, why, why? And I say, why the fuck not? <laughs> why the fuck not? Yeah, the 
Samson. Okay, I will take a break. And do some more painting. See, it's starting to screw it up now. I was hoping to end on a positive note, but I see that I'm screwing up a little bit. Maybe I was talking too much. Now her nose even looks grumpy. And that's the problem. You can keep on going back and forth. Stuff like that. Okay, that was better. Anyway, a little thing. Uh, so, I definitely did some progress. I can see. Uh, and just gonna go in and touch up a little bit of light. It's very wet right now, so the colors are mixing definitely on the canvas. That's good. Make some directions. I think kind of a subtle, nice and subtle rendition. Funny, it's all in these extreme subtle details I find my in a way my reason. Do art. And I could not care less about the conceptual artists and their solipsism, self importance, nauseating. Belief. What they do is more important than traditional art like this. You know, just because you can't explain something doesn't mean that it's good. And that concept is kind of lost in the whole art debate. There's also so few people who actually care about art at all. In a conceptual sense, so I just wonder if there is some kind of a strange illusion. 
illusion that keeps it alive, this fear of not being political correct, This is built up by so many tiny choices. And that's maybe the good thing about these small paintings. That I come so close to them. Mm. I think it has a uh, not good enough. Do a small one more small touch up and this has Fine. But I wouldn't, maybe I even just stop here when it comes to the face. I'll see. Okay. Need to be careful now. So subtle, almost nothing. And that's the thing about painting faces too. It's like so small things that will change basically everything. And. Um, that's why this is kind of the hardest thing you can do. Anyway. Okay. Ah, oh, there. Yeah. The lips. These gorgeous red lips. Yeah. Give them that kiss.
a little bit. Make it a little bit rounder. There's also things you can do with lasso. Just go in and when it has dried, you just make a touch up. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Ah, that was nice. I think. Was it? Sure. There. Well, yeah. Did I fuck it up? What the fuck? I think I fucked it up. Oh my god. It's hard to, really hard to walk back the cat. Yeah, that was nice. But I fucked it up. You walk away a little bit now. Turn away. So I can get some 
Something with the eyes here. Maybe it's that. Yeah, maybe that. That's too drawn. Saw. I'm going to do a brush stroke, strategic brush stroke coming down here. Goes in there, makes a shadow, and this. This. And there is also some here. Ah, oh, that was really nice. Mmm, delicious. There's a here, one like this, one here. And suddenly things start to come alive a little bit again. So then, beautiful. But it can't be that liney to be a little bit more dissolved so let's just do it like this and then I go over it with some yellow and I kind of just calms it down a little bit and boom and boom learn something new. I have to make more of these small paintings. I really learn from them. <sighs> yes, okay. Well, that be like that. That was very subtle. So, until next time. Yes. Work, work, work. Work, 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 work. Uh, yeah, I'm getting stressed here because it's going actually slower than I thought. And uh, now I am supposed to be finished with this. Not so many days, so it's funny how it's hard to foresee how long something takes. So but I will just keep painting. It's now 10 in the morning and I've been awake for not more than 13 hours actually. So I'm gonna just keep painting until this thing is basically done. <laughs> I probably need one more touch up after that but So it will be. That is why I was talking about this time, wasting of time. Uh, if you don't do, if you are kind of a little bit depressed or something, the worst thing you can do is sit down and wait until it's going to go over. 
you just need to pick up the pencil, not tell us, oh, I'm going to, oh, I want to paint, but I can't do because I'm so tired and I'm so bloody, bloody, bloody. Well, you're not going to get less tired or less exhausted by not doing it. So, the thing is, just do it. I'm also the master of multitasking, like I know I just posted another video on YouTube while I'm doing this. So I keep kind of <laughs> hammering myself with all this dissonance. But then again, that's how I am, so I just have to work harder. Some vivid colors in this painting. It's really just bang. It is bang. We don't need glasses to do this. It's just sometimes when I when I do very close ups. a little bit long-sided and it runs in my family. My father also became long-sided. Perfect vision and then boom. So quite annoying actually. I guess you could do an operation or something. Oh yeah, that hits this one because that is reflected in this one. That's quite cool. I thought it was actually behind. But it was that's cool. Also explains a little bit the shape. So yeah. Hmm. One with the cut like. There's some kind of green color here that I don't really understand. So I just have to improvise. Yeah. 
here. I'm going to change from this small palette now because I use that for the face. I have different palettes that I use to different parts. If I want to do a very detailed thing, I like to use smaller tools, smaller palette. But now when I'm starting to move about more around it, it is best to actually use a bigger palette because if not it's good the colors will in the end become quite dirty and stuff this and is in motion so I need to paint it in motion I have to dissolve it in a way so I'm going to try to do that and it's strange because hands actually all the way on the dress so it kind of goes all the way in here and then boom so to do that I have to do something with the dress and then kind of just make it Press. Starting point, light it up a little bit. Gonna keep this a little bit down because the highlights are up here. So I don't want too much, I do not want too much um, textures down there.
his spots, his flowers on her dress. She has to get in there. Just impressions. yellow hair. That yellow actually looks like the yellow on the arm, but it's a tiny bit different, a little bit more white in it. I see that also on the arm, it's a little bit different here. But these things are gliding right into one another, so it's very hard to see, actually. The thing I do, I might put on a thick layer of paint, but then I kind of just use that layer and I build on it. I build in colors into a layer after I've been painting. If you get my point, the good thing about this brush, and I for, just forget eating, so I just keep painting and I keep losing weight. So, also probably a little bit of muscle mass, but then again, I do have enough to start sort of starters. Oh, shit. I guess that was a sign. Uh, so, I don't remember what I was going to do. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take a short break. Um, keep on painting. doing touch up. I'm going to start up here. I'm just going to even out the lines to give it a more subtle <coughs> subtle finish. It's very important to me. Yeah, that's it. Ok, 
Okay, so it'll finish. Uh, if the if the surfaces are if it's too hard, it doesn't seem true because when it hits there, it will be a spillover with the color and light into the. So, uh, there will be a high amount of contrast. Call it transhuman in Norwegian. I have no idea what it's called in English. Um, like when this means that it's um, trans. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, there mustn't be any lines there. It has to be. Kind of a sh natural shadow, a uh, shadow that actually feels natural. That depend that despite that there is a shadow, they are actually on the same level in a way. Why do I also say in a way? I hate that when I say that. So boring. There's no such thing. Is or it isn't. Um, yeah. So that is what I'm doing now to get, give it a more subtle, subtle finish. You see that especially in in um, Van Mier's painting. We have these uh, very subtle I'm gonna Google that fucking word. It's so annoying. Jesus. Wonder about something? Fucking Google it. <sighs> Translate. Transition. Of course, transition. Jeez, I could not. Have to answer the message. Maybe it's not the right word really for this, 
but it's a transition between this one to that one. It has to be kind of at the same level. Uh, it can't be. It can be hard. It can be really. Uh, what does really translucent mean? Translucent. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna figure out what kind of word that is used specifically for this. It would be better here, it would be a bit better if I had done this when it was actually wet and wet because then it's much um, easier to do that. Now I have to kind of make this wet and then I have to make the other surface also wet. And kind of drag that in to the other shadow and then go over that one again. Fuck, really give it like this. Have to kind of do like this, make both wet. Now and then I go back to the shadow. And I kind of drag this one like this. And that is how you kind of get this nice transition in the end. Same goes for this one, it has to be red on the top there. So it kind of comes a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Now there's a very, very white. Here it's very light. So a little bit more light here too. Okay, we're almost actually starting up there. So this is basically what I'm going to do with the whole canvas for a couple of hours to. send it to an exhibition, wet actually, always get into that situation, so boring, so annoying. Yeah. Anyway, 
just have to live with it, I guess. Zoom a little bit since I'm working on that specific place. Okay, maybe a little bit like this. And zoom. Zim Zalabim. So, so you can actually see a little bit better what I'm doing. Is that good? Mixing basically blue, yellow, and red now, and I vary the different uh, amounts depend where I paint. Yeah. Shadows coming down here. Maybe it's translucent. I'm going to check out if that is the right word. Maybe some of you, if somebody sees this segment of the video, which are not Norwegian, or who knows what it's called, it would be fun to know what kind of word I should actually use. Yeah. This kind of double shadow. Uh, yeah. It's also very bright, actually. There, so I'm here now because the deeper you get into these surfaces, the more you want them to hang together. 
When you start out with a sketch, it doesn't really matter that much. Or actually, it doesn't really matter at all. Because it's a sketch, but the closer, the more you keep going, the more important it is that it is actually correct. All the nuances, like it can't be a whole hair, it has to be it has to hang together with the rest. In a way, I'm using the pen, the pencil as other people would use their charcoal. Just answer my fucking question. This is basically why I love, why I love the oil paint so much. You can just work on top, work on top until you find what you are looking for. So yeah, it's a good thing. See what I do? I just keep molding these contrasts. And here is a little bit blue. I let the green kind of glide right over into the violet and blue, and then yellow and violet. So it is just, in a way, it is expression impressionism on a more subtle level it is basically the same as the impressionist did yeah I'm always thinking about rainbow and the color circle
working it, I'm working it. That is all. So I just keep doing this until I find the right hue, the right um, texture, the right everything directions. Because now here is going to be totally flat because it's in the shadows. So takes a while, but in the end, I think it's going to be great actually. Anyway, I can't film everything, so yeah, see you later. Okay, here it is in the frame, signed and ready to go. Just a little touch up here under the light, and uh, it's good to go. I kind of wish I had a little bit more time on it, but then again. When you don't have that much time, you have to solve problems in a different way, which can actually be quite interesting. You have to figure out ways to get the effects you want without spending eons on time on every detail. I kind of have to enhance it step by step, and uh, it's quite interesting actually. So this cloth, go there, goes in here, yeah, and enhance the highlights. Two highlights. Almost the last one. This one will also a tiny shadow there. This is this is what I mean. This is what you could do forever. You could just keep going and finding new things to add in. And it really becomes a neurosis in the end. So, so you just have to make a choice and say the end the end the end <laughs> it's fun ah, almost the end god I have to wrap this up too because they're coming to get it and I'm kind of out of time so so yeah okay okay I'm gonna leave it now this is cool. This is quite good. I'm pleased with it. As I say, I have done some compromises. Yeah, I can maybe put this over here and show you. So, there. And maybe I should just zoom a little bit. That's too. So, this is more the colors, and you see that light has become quite nice. Okay. Interesting.